Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. This is Elmore the Conservative, and we have uh, Dr. George Maurer on the show with us today. He's going to basically talk about critical race theory. So, George, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much for helping me spread this very important message for parents. Yes, yes, and thank you for for being a guest. It's an honor to have you. I am familiar with critical race theory, but just to make sure that all the listeners are on the on the same page and uh, understand about this uh, pariah that is out here in our nation, uh, just give a give a summary of what what critical race theory is and what it teaches. Well, uh, critical race theory is a Marxist ideology, and it's important to remember that these people are Marxists at their core. And instead of using class to separate people, they are using race to inject negative racial tension. And in this case, uh, generally between children uh, as young as kindergarten. And one of the things that people also need to understand is that ethnic studies and critical race theory are not the same thing, even though they're used interchangeably by a lot of school systems. Ethnic studies is the positive, healthy learning of one's culture, leading to self-confidence, self-awareness, things that are very important for one's success as one grows up and goes out into the world, so to speak. Critical race theory, on the other hand, is a very tight focus on our nation's worst moments without giving due credit to all of the progress that we've made since the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And we have come a very long way. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, um, this is something that's been going on for a while, just maybe not under that name or having that title. But uh, the way the way history can emerge and come through the ages it's like the worst things, the worst experiences, the the most viral things stand out or get focused on the most. And I understand that to that to be a, a part of it is you know focusing on these bad things in history that may have been motivated by race or racist people. And uh, isn't there uh, another part of of critical race theory that teaches that people are inherently thinking a certain way almost from from the cradle because of your race that uh right. you know this is something almost in your dna to to believe uh, if you could talk definitely about, about that one for of a the uh, one of the things that they teach as a matter of fact in these critical race theory classes is that white people are inherently racist you are racist, whether you know it or not, whether you're consciously or unconsciously doing it, you are being racist. And so, and then they also blame Asians for being white-like, for being uh, complicit in the uh, racism against people of color. And, you know, and it's just, it's just so crazy because they, they say things like your average textbook at school is designed to help white and Asian students excel, yet that very same book is designed to keep down African Americans, Hispanics, uh, indigenous peoples. And I mean, I've never, I've asked a few people, okay, how exactly does that work? And of course, they, they don't have a good answer because there is no answer. But, but yes, they, to be white is inherently racist and the other one of the other things they teach is it's impossible to be racist against a white person because being racist requires privilege and power and without both you cannot be racist so so people of color can act in any way they want to toward young white children and white asian children and they cannot do and if they try to stand up for themselves or say hey that's wrong please don't that in itself is racist. So it is a no-win situation uh, on either side. And actually, you know, no one benefits from this relationship the way they design it. Absolutely no one. And um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's a horrible, terrible thing 
and it's designed to only do bad things. Don't ever believe a, a critical race theorist when they say things like, oh, we're trying to make racism better. No, they're not. They're trying to make it worse. That's what they're doing. And, and I would say that this this mask that these people are wearing, you know, the character behind the mask is really to create racial divisiveness. Mm -hmm. It is, is really to do that. And all all racism is predicated on a lie. And I, I've heard people say that uh, mainly African-Americans say that you cannot be racist unless you are oppressing someone else. But so right. uh, oppression and racism is not the same thing. So if you look at uh, anti-Semitism and the way that, that many people feel about about uh, Jews and uh, the things that have been said at universities about uh, a war that's not even going on here, but with, with Israel and Hamas, you can be racist towards them, just, just saying things when, when you have this negative thing about uh, a group, judging by a group instead of judging people as individuals. Yes, and uh, the, the conflict between Israel and Hamas is going on right now. And uh, as a matter of fact, I just watched a, a documentary called Killing America that partially addresses that conflict that's going on in San Francisco Bay Area schools. Some of the finest schools in the nation, by the way, some of the richest schools in the nation, yes. by the way. And there are students walking up and down the halls. Um, saying things, and I, I forget the exact chant, but someday Palestine will be free from the land to the sea, something like that. And so they're, you know, and, and of course the Jewish students and the other reasonable students in the school are saying, you know, this is wrong. We should not be allowing our students to, to say these hateful things and, and creating racism against the Jewish people in these schools. But quite often, the schools are doing nothing about it. You know, they refuse to take a stand against it. And it's, um, and I mean, again, history repeats itself, to quote the movie, to quote the documentary. And that is exactly what's going on. This is exactly how this stuff started in Nazi Germany. You know, blaming Jewish people for all kinds of things that they had nothing to do with. And all of a sudden, it seemed reasonable to the vast majority of the German public to start rounding them up and putting them into little camps where they couldn't harm anyone. Um, you know, and, you know, and if you talk to people from like Vietnam, people from Venezuela, people from Cuba who are coming to this country, they generally say the same thing. When communism was introduced into their country, this was the exact environment that they were experiencing. And so, you know, and again, this is, you're right, this has been going on a long time. These Marxists, you know, their ultimate goal is to install Marxist government, communist governments in every nation in the world. And this has been going on for 150 odd years, almost 200 years, actually. And, uh, you know, Marx, you know, they were working on this stuff in the 1840s and the 1850s, and we're not too far away from the 2040s and the 2050s. So, uh, but they've been working for this for almost 200 years now. They're not going to give up. And America happens to be the big enchilada, uh, you know, to just to defeat capitalism, to defeat freedom, to defeat liberty, to defeat the nuclear family, which they see as oppressive and once America falls, nothing's going to stop them from taking over this world. And that's why it's so important that we here in the United States defend liberty and freedom and capitalism. And uh, I want to tell people who may have been a follower or a fan of Black Lives Matter at some point, they did have this in their mission statement. It was on their website. Yes, they did. That... Uh, they wanted to remove the father, the man from the family, from the, from Correct. the nuclear family. And there's video footage of one of those founders saying that they are trained Marxists. And like yes, you said, is. one of the best ways, I mean, uh, capitalism has been very, very successful and profitable in America. It is one of the reasons why the United States is the greatest country on the planet. And so 
it is easier to offer someone Marxism or something else if you destroy what we already have here. And then, right. and and then the you're is, saying, look, we, it obviously didn't work. Let's, let's do this. Let's try this. Right. Well, the thing about capitalism is it hasn't just been successful here. It has been successful globally. And, you know, things like, uh, like extreme poverty are at the lowest levels in history. You know, and a, a lot of, a lot of folks in these third world countries, you know, they may not be living in free societies, but they are benefiting from capitalism within their societies, within their nations. Um, you know, they may not be completely free, but they found a way to make it work. And so, you know, in extreme poverty, we're talking about people who are living on like one or two dollars a day. Okay. And the number of people doing that is at its, again, lowest levels in history because of global capitalism. Now, Marxism, on the other hand, tells you, you don't need to worry about achieving. You don't need to worry about working hard. You don't need to worry about taking care of your family. You don't need to worry about having fathers in the nuclear family because the government will take care of you. They will always provide, don't you worry about a thing. And of course, the part they don't tell you about is where if you get out of line, they put a gun to the back of your head and blow your brains out or round you up and put you into concentration camps or whatever the case may be. You know, Venezuela was one of the richest nations in the Americas behind the United States and Canada, of course. Very successful economy and because of their oil industry. And so then the Marxists in that nation convinced the people that the oil, na the oil industry was taking advantage of them, not giving them their fair share, their due. So they elected a Marxist to take over the nation and to make everything right, to make everything fair. And within a couple of years, they're eating their dogs and their cats because there's no food in the grocery stores. That sounds familiar. And I have, uh, yeah, <laughs> I have members in my family who are Cuban. I'm not Cuban, not by blood in my family, but uh -huh. they just went to Cuba, just came back and everything they needed, they had to find on the black market. Grocery stores, wow. empty. Hospitals, empty. I mean, they were looking, they had, they caught the flu while they were there. Could not find medicine anywhere. Not even, right. you know, your basic little cold tablets, nothing. And that is what comes with a communist country. With, you know, when the government controls everything in that way, they, they are unable to meet the needs of the people and with freedom and liberty, we are given the ability to take care of our own needs. And we are much better at that than some bureaucrat sitting in an office somewhere 400 miles away or 2,000 miles away. And their main concern is, oh, it's almost four o'clock. I got to go home, you know? Um, so, so, I mean, the, 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 the distinctions could not be more clear. Yeah. And then in a... Marxist system in a socialist society or a, a communist society, the, the ones who prosper and benefit the most are always the government. The, there's never any, any lack for them. They get the best of the best. And Correct. people, people need to, it's important to know history, but you can just look at North Korea and look at Russia and, and different places that have variations of, of Marxism or communism and what it is doing what is doing for them and who is benefiting from it. Because there are always people that benefit, but the, the root of all evil is the love of money. So it, it's so that sure. they, they're, they're saying it needs to be distributed, but they're doing the distributing. And right. even, even in America with taxes, the government takes their salaries out of the taxes. And then we, we have to trust them and, and keep them in check and keep an eye on them to do that correct allocating for where the tax money is supposed to go. Yes. You know, and when, when you give someone, you know, absolute power corrupts, absolutely well-known, well-known saying, uh, and when you give the people or when you give a small group of people, the power 
and the authority to completely distribute resources within a society. Okay, uh, I determine everybody needs one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these. So then I began handing out one, 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 one. However, as a human being who is easy, easily influenced and, you know, then maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe I deserve two because, you know, I'm doing the important work here. And maybe a little while later, maybe I need three, maybe I need 10, maybe I need a hundred. Um, and, 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 and that's what happens every single time, you know, you give these people the power and authority to regulate these things the way they would need to, to be fair. And then before you know it, they are the most unfair things in the world, most unfair people in the world. And you were mentioning, you know, the differences between, you know, the various, uh, but you mentioned North Korea. And if you've ever seen that map they have of North Korea and South Korea at night, yes. satellite shot over the nations. South Korea, obviously a prospering capitalistic nation, it's done a lot of things, a lot of great things. Their car industry has been, has, has come miles, miles in the last 20, 30 years. But if you look at it, South Korea is completely lit up. In North Korea, there's only one spot, one small spot, Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea is the only thing that has electric lights at night. I, again, Pyongyang, they control the resources. We obviously need power at night. Nobody else does, you know, and, and that's the result every single time. Right. And this is, this is how things can start. This is one of many different possible seeds. And it's, it's no wonder that they're starting this uh, as soon as kindergarten or first grade that was going to be one of my questions that i asked you you know what uh, what grade level they start to implement this but that's how you in indoctrinate people that's how we had the brown shirts you know spying on and turning in their parents hitler's little adorable army even had their own special uniforms 